good morning ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video i'm excited today today we are at a body of water in northern california that i have never fished before i'll be honest this year has been kind of tough as far as picking out where i want to fish having some history here now i've got some of my favorite spots like the delta various etc that i typically go to based on of course the weather and then just the history but man with all this crazy weather i feel like we're starting with a blank slate a fresh start and everything's thrown out the window and i think it's kind of been exemplified this year i mean we've gone to some places that i typically wouldn't fish this time of year based on conditions and weather and i'd say on average driving two plus hours one way just to go fishing but it is what it is however today i'm at a new place and for me typically when i'm picking an area or finding an area that i want to try to kayak fish specifically i'll do probably what a lot of you guys do and we'll hop on google earth we'll look around see nearby bodies of water we'll do our scouting and as i was scouring google earth there was one particular body of water that stuck out and it's actually a place that a few of you guys have messaged me over the years to check out i just really never have i think i've kind of got stubborn and stuck in some of my ways and fished you know the same six or seven bodies of water pretty consistently but last night i saw that on the google earth and one thing that really stuck out to me was how many tules or reeds line this lake and uh, that's something i had no idea was a part of this fishery whether or not it makes a difference in the bite i have no idea but i think one of the cool things about trying a new place a new body of water is just the scenery you know going to a place that you have no preconceived notions about everything's different you have no idea what they're going to be biting what they're going to be doing and you really have to figure out that puzzle so that is the game plan today fishing a new body of water we've got I think nine rods with us today. I was rigging up last night. I had no idea what to pack. Fish could be doing anything at this point. Finger test water. Yeah, it feels like 53, 54, kind of cold, a little dingy. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So that is the video today, guys. Seeing if we can figure out this puzzle. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. All right, let's get started with the old spinner bait. Water clarity is perfect for it. Maybe one or two foot of viz. A little cloud cover and wind probably would have helped, but again, I have no idea. Any bait at this point could work. We're gonna try shallow, maybe deep. Try fishing the tulies first. We'll work out towards the grass line. I just have no idea. Oh my god, a big one. I'm talking a big one. I saw it come up and get it. It almost didn't even look like a bass. That was the first, what, minute of fishing? Holy crap, that was a big one. Came up and ate the spinnerbait. I saw it. Wouldn't have seen it if I didn't have my glasses on. Side note, I really like the amber lenses in the spring with dirtier water. You can really see. Wow. Well, Probably a good sign. My God. fish right there you can see where the water's been up and these reeds are still in the water or some of them and i bet you that fish right there is a bass and similar to where we just had one come up and miss the bait i bet you there's a bass chilling in these reeds I saw the spinner bait came up and swiped at it and just missed it i don't know Beautiful. Nice. 
All right, maybe it's not going to take us too long to figure out a pattern. Ooh, man, look, somebody got him. Alrighty, nice chunky one. Thank you, sir. So that's the exact same thing the first one did. Came out from the reeds or the tulies or again, whatever you want to call them. I'll say one thing I wasn't expecting was it's kind of silly too, is this lake being so high, which makes sense obviously, but these reeds that we're seeing on Google Earth, these were all above water. These are the tops of them. I mean, some of them are still up on the bank, you can see, but these reeds right here, they're in like 10 foot of water. And I can tell they've been underwater for a minute. There's some bunch of algae and stuff growing on them. But yeah, it looks like from this perspective, it looks like we're fishing shallow, but it's actually pretty deep. And these are just the tippy tops of the tulies. of videos ago you guys told me to put a trailer hook on my spinner bait and I listened but I just didn't do it <laughs> short strike on this we got to change something up get a smaller bait on or maybe we'll try to fashion spinnerbait trailer hook out of maybe a flipping hook I don't know I'm not sure if that'll actually work the eye might not be big enough to go around the hook three bites though on the spinnerbait doing the same exact thing like again looks like we're fishing shallow but we're in about seven and a half feet right here I guess they're maybe more mid column or right under the tops of these and they're seeing this come by and smoking it just not eating the whole thing Funny, I've seen every single one of these fish come and get it too because I've been standing up for every bite we've had. There we are. Well, he got it. Oh. Oh, 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 easy, fella. Yeah, that was a nice one. There's a nice one. That one was shallow, too. A lot shallower than the other ones. Oh, these fish are kind of beat up. All right. Number two. I was just about to put down the spinnerbait and try something else, but... We're going to have to keep going with it. Whew, that's a fun bite. Yeah, that one was... I don't know, probably in five foot or so. Shallower than the first three bites, so that's encouraging. It's so funny, every single one of these fish I've seen, they're just sitting in here, and then when they come up and bite, they show themselves. Well, I'm glad we decided to explore this place, give it a shot, and I'm even happier that they're biting in the reeds, in the tulies. I knew there was a chance that there'd be no bite shallow and we'd maybe have to go deeper and graft some of these fish or something, but there is definitely a population of shallow, yeah, I want to say pre-spawn fish. I don't think these fish are on beds or anything that are biting. I'm going to say, too, the spinnerbait is like really the only bait you can fish this stuff with. It's so dense, you can't like flip it. It just gets probably buried in the clump of reeds. I mean, this stuff is thick. There's only so many baits that'll come through this stuff so easy, and spinnerbait's one of them. Jeez, it's getting a little toasty already. I'm not complaining. It's a big one. I don't think I can boat flip this dude. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there's a nice one. Boom. That's fun. A shallow one. That's a nice belly shirt right there. Whew. Gotta love a shallow spinnerbait bite. A lot of fun. They're smoking it today. A lot of casts, a lot of casts. But when we get bit, it seems to be a decent fish. And a shallow one too. Oh, happy we came here. Happy we didn't go to like a familiar place or launch. Fish are biting a technique that I was hoping they'd bite. All is well right now. Just going after my cull shad? Oh god. That'd be bad. First one I didn't see. Oh, oh no. Get out of there. Yeah, buddy. Not a lot of bites. But they're all good quality. Nice. Thank you, sir. This is right where I caught him, right here. Four foot or so. Yeah, it's, it's funny, I, I keep saying not a lot of bites, and it's true, but it's not true at the same time. I'd say it's like just enough to keep me locked with this bait. I mean, I'm not saying I won't try some other stuff, we definitely will. We have here and there, situationally, but it's like a bite every, what, 30 minutes or so? Which is quite a few casts. That, uh, that keeps me confident in, in keeping this in my hand. If it was like a bite every hour or whatever, it'd probably make me change baits more often, but just enough where I... I know I can get a bite every 30 minutes if I make enough casts and cover enough water, so to me that's that's a good deal. That's a giant. That's a big one. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. That's a tank. There's a tank right there. There's a tank. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Big one. Nice fish. Beauty. Thank you, sir. Yep. Spinner bait it is. Man, that thing like hit it. Dude, like straight subsurface. Almost like a topwater bite. Jeez. Get a little wind now, cloudier. I mean, if anything, you think that would help the bite. We'll see though. 
Oh, duckweed. Should have brought the old frog. Tell you what, if we keep getting some warm weather, a couple weeks, come back here with a frog, that's for sure. right there. out a little deeper. I just think a lot of the bass are shallower, at least the ones we can catch. Even though that one bit in like 16 foot of water. I guess they're just chasing bait. So black and blue jig like. End of the creek. Finger test doesn't really feel like warmer water though, so I hear a waterfall, fresh water coming in, that's probably why. But man, does this not look fishy or what? There's bait in here too, you can see there's bait down there. So you gotta imagine there's some bass that have fouled it back here, right? Let's uh, get out of here. There might be some fish to be caught back here, but while it's still kind of cloudy, I want to take advantage of that bite. I think it really did pick up. So we had some cloud cover and some wind. No time to waste. fish we had one it was like what the second cast of the crankbait maybe there's other bites to be had out here and the only reason we picked up the crankbait is finally found a little patch of rock and not completely congested with tulies so why not there's not a lot of areas like that which i'm okay with but when there is i guess we gotta pick up the crankbait it's the water clarity is the only thing that makes me not super in love with crankbait bite right now you got a big blade on the spinner baits, kind of the is the main attractor to a lot of our fish. Oh, maybe not then. Oh yeah, there's a crankbait bite to be had too. Nice. I guess we'll keep it in our hand a little longer. I didn't bring the net today, guys, because when I don't bring the net, I catch more fish. I swear to you. feeding today. They're biting. <laughs> so funny, I was just about to put the crankbait down, but because we we're getting closer to the tools, but maybe we'll have to mix it in just a bit more. <clears throat> That's the only thing with this bait is we won't be able to work the toolies like we will with a spare bait. Alright, well, never bait their biting at least when the situation calls for it. Yeah, first 
cast. I might be missing out on some bites here. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Whoop, I lost tension on him. <laughs> Man, got a mouthful of hooks on him. There we go. Alright. Another meaty one. Dude, what is up with these fish? Look at the gashes in them. It's like the third fish with a like a gash through it. Any freaking sea lions in here or something? Man, the ratio of fish we've caught compared to how long we've thrown a bait is way higher for the crankbait. Like, way higher. We haven't thrown it hardly at all, and we've already got two fish on it. Pretty sure that means something, but again, it's kind of situational. Right here was a spot that had a clean opening, so I thought, why not? Sure enough. This is maybe gonna get bit better than spinnerbait. Maybe. They're chasing. They're chasing bait, that's for sure. Come here, dude. What do you look like? He's clean, he's healthy. No gashes on him. Huh. Just don't know. It's a good day of fishing today. 12.45, caught what, eight or nine fish? It's a solid day. You can see here's the one spot where there's some rock. Clearly some fish. See some steeper ledges in the distance. Maybe there's some rock and some cleaner bottom over there. We'll give that a shot. While we make our venture over, I think it's uh, meat stick time. You guys know I've been uh, a fan of meat sticks for a while, specifically these dudes right here. Righteous Felon Craft Jerky. It is craft jerky. It's not like your normal Slim Jim. Just came out with it. Street taco. Not sure what it's gonna taste like other than maybe a street taco, but let's give it a taste. It's different. It's good. It definitely tastes like taco meat. I'm a fan. Well, let's give this a shot. Definitely a lot different than what we have been fishing. It's not very isolated though. It's all the same, this 100, 200 yard stretch, so let's see. We're on. We're on. Oh, dang it. Okay, there's a little one, but it was a bite. Trying to stop my blow port. Putting it on like a slow troll, covering water fast, but okay. Oh, got smoke there. Dang it, how'd he miss it? Or how'd I miss him? I'm getting a few bites off of this stretch. Can't keep him hooked. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for today's day out on the water. As mentioned, a new body of water, a place I've never fished, and it paid off today. I knew it could have gone either way, but today it was definitely a solid day of fishing. But yeah, I got there. I think we launched the boat around 8.30 in the morning. We made our way right to a patch of tules, a long stretch of them on one side of the lake that I really wanted to fish. Water was pretty stained. I'd say about two, two and a half foot of visibility. Sun was out. It was a beautiful morning. Decided to go with the spinnerbait. I think within the first 10 minutes, Minutes, we actually had a fish come up and try to eat the spinnerbait right along those tules. And the interesting part was based on Google Earth research and seeing those tules out of the water, it wasn't anything like that today. Obviously with all this rain in California, the water levels have all come up and this lake was no exception. A lot of those tules were actually in the water, submerged. I was actually fishing in 10, 12 foot of water and those tules would be just subsurface. A little while later, made a cast with a spinnerbait, still fishing probably seven, eight 
foot of water around those toolies on the tops of them. Just slow rolling it. Got bit. First fish of the day in the boat. I thought, all right, there's two bites on the spinner bait. We got to keep going with it. We kept going, kept going. Finally got another bite, another short strike, another fish that I'd actually seen come up and try to eat the spinner bait. One for three as far as hooking up with fish and putting me in the boat. But again, another bite and I'm pretty stoked at this point because three bites, start of the morning. That's usually a sign that that's what you need to keep doing or at least something you can continue to do to get some bites. So that's what we did. We kept going and going and going with it. You know, it took a while to get our fourth bite of the day. However, another nice salad fish, we hooked into that fish, which made me feel better. I was thinking maybe it was a mistake that I forgot to put on a trailer hook, like a lot of you guys said, but really after those first two short strikes, not too many after that. We kept going, kept going, trying different depths. I was thinking a lot of these fish were actually sitting in the toolies a little bit deeper, but the third fish of the day came a lot shallower. I'd say in five foot of water, same thing, throwing that spinner bait. Fish came up, smoked it, a nice quality fish, got it in the boat. At this point, I'm like 95% sure this is all we're gonna be doing for the rest of the day. So we keep going with it, catch a few more, make our way down even further. The wind started to pick up a little bit, got a little bit more cloud cover, standing up, reeling that spinner bait back to the boat. I see it big old bucket come and smoke that thing. Great subsurface, almost looked like a topwater bite. As soon as that fish bit, I knew it was a pretty big one. The boat was still going with a current. I'm just keeping pressure on this fish. I swing it around, reach down, get my hand in its mouth, bring her up, and man, what a feeling when you bring that fish up and you see how big it is. Quality, quality fish right there on the spinner bait. So that was a nice surprise for sure. And then we keep going with it. I think we catch one more on the spinner bait. Again, it seems like it's a really, really epic bite, but it really wasn't. I was making a lot of casts to get these bites so a lot of ground covered to get the fish that we did but we decided to make our way back into the creek it looked fishy i mean gosh all those trees overhanging limbs some sunken timber water clarity was a little more stained but it looked really good and we fished in there for a little bit and didn't catch anything so we got out of there made our way back out at this point we're fishing the spinnerbait quite a bit we haven't gotten bit in a while and the conditions are starting to change again the sun's starting to poke out wind kind of died down and other than a lot of toolies along the bed there'd be these little patches of rock and you could even see not only the rock on the bank but using the down imaging and then of course the side scan you can see those rock piles extending out into the water so on a whim decided to throw a crankbait something that I really didn't think would work today just because the water was a little little too dirty for what I would like to throw a crankbait in picked up that Fritz side 7 in ghost morning dawn and I think within two or three casts we got a bite fish pulled off though thought okay maybe a random fish maybe a sign maybe a few casts later another bite on the crankbait and I was like, okay, well, maybe there's a crankbait bite going on too. I think ultimately with everything today, it was really just a bait fish bite. You know, these fish were feeding up on bait fish, moving up shallow. So spinnerbait, crankbait, if you put something in their face, I think you were likely to get bit. But we kept going with that crankbait, made another move to another part of the lake, found another stretch that had an opening where there was some rock, another fish on the Fritz side seven. Everything was kind of situational today, as you guys can see. A few casts later, one right at the boat, same spot, another fish in the boat. And man, I'll tell you what, these fish had some battle scars on them. I have no clue what was nipping at them, if it was maybe like some otters or what, but I don't know why those fish had gashes on them. But guys, that is it for today's video. A new body of water for me. I'm sure I will make my return there. Felt fishy, looked fishy, and it was fishy. Happy with today's day. A lot of fun to set back on a few fish. But as always, I thank you guys for watching, for coming along, and I will catch you guys in the next video.